Hey, everybody, it's Patrick McFadden, CEO of Indispensable Marketing, one half of the Value Brokers. I'm here with peace and blessings, everybody. Rob YB, Youngblood, your LinkedIn locksmith, your number one connector, chief connecting officer of YB Connects. We're on ESPN Richmond 106.1. And today we're going to be talking about value. I know we've had a discussion kind of behind the scenes, YB, around money, relationships, family structure. Mm -hmm. what, are, what are your thoughts on what we've kind of already talked about? Yeah, I think it's so important, man. You know, when, when you're starting out as an entrepreneur, it's so critical that you focus on the basics. You know, we were just talking about how, you know, you might get a big check and you might blow that thing. And then the next month you don't have that check. It's like, what do you end up doing? And so we want to give you some, uh, some tips on how to just, you know, create that value within your family. Uh, because if the home team is not right, then you can forget about long-standing business. Wouldn't you agree? Mm, I, I, you brought up a good point there. Home is your first business. Mm -hmm. And like you talked about, if home is not right, nothing else matters. It's too much. I often have this saying that life is hard, business is easy. Mm. <laughs> because life is the part that really gets in the way of everything. And um I know the guy Zig Ziglar, he's passed now, but he often said that his home life is the reason that he has business success. Yeah. Is what is what happens there that allows him to go out into the world, not have worries and doubts, you know, that the children aren't being taken care of, that the bills aren't getting paid and everything at home. So I 100%, that resonated with me when you talked about having home straight first. It's yeah. almost the first business. And you're talking, you, you, so, so you're listening to two guys where we're happily married. You know, I've been married going on 16 years. Patrick, how, how long? Uh, 11 years. So, so we got double digits. And so the lesson, the lesson that we can give you for those of you who are either uh, about to get married or you just, you know, maybe you just got married, you're in business, or maybe you're about to get married again, but it's just understand, man. You know, keeping your house happy, keeping your home straight uh, will prevent a lot of uh, uh, challenges in business. Now, keep in mind, you know, the, the things that are going on in your business can impact your family life as well. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's vice versa. So, you know, you got to make sure you keep home happy uh, in order for your business to thrive. But then you got to make sure your business is doing well so your family doesn't, doesn't suffer. I, I like something that you said uh, but prior to us coming on. You talked about, hey, listen, you told your wife, Yo, if we got to go back and, and, and sleep on mama's floor, uh, I'm willing to do that because I know what, you know, what comes with this price of being a business owner, man. Tell, tell us a little bit yeah. more about that. Yeah, you know, I, you know, when you're getting started, it's it's rough. I mean, obviously, you're trying to get reoccurring revenue is the biggest thing, right? Because most spouses want that consistent income. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's usually going to come through some reoccurring revenue. But anybody that's been in business for any amount of time gonna, is going to tell you there's the flows and ebbs yeah. right yeah. uh one month uh thirty thousand another month two thousand another month three thousand right so there's ebbs and flows and it could be by quarter or seasons and i just remember telling my wife i was like look uh while i'm navigating this thing and flying this plane if we got to go back and sleep on mom's floor uh it's only for a moment see i also put things in perspective it's a season yeah but if we had to I'm willing to get willing down to do and start there and, and keep grinding and, and pushing. And so, but I think that that communication is key yeah. to say like yeah. that exists, that, that may be a possibility. I'm, that's not what I want, right. but it's but I'm a will, possibility. I'm willing, I'm, willing to take, I'm willing to take that shot, you know, and I think for a lot of men, you know, there's that ego factor, right? You know, I'm not going to go back in with your parents, you know, what, what, what do I look like? I'm supposed to be the provider, but sometimes we have to make, you know, strategic moves. We might have to take one step back to then propel five steps forward, uh, removing that ego. Because at the end of the day, when you can have your solid foundation, it can lead to lifelong business, right? It, that lives outside of you um, because you have that foundation straight. You know, I, I think about a tower. I think about like, a, like let's say like a skyscraper. You know, you can only have a, a super high skyscraper unless your foundation is super deep you know what i mean so you can't expect to have a a, a 100 story a skyscraper with like a two foot uh, foundation right that thing is going to topple over matter of fact you probably won't even be able to build it but if you have a solid deep foundation 
um, that that extends way below the ground, then it'll it'll hold and support everything that's above the ground. You know, this conversation reminds me of something that I used to do as an analogy all the time, which is most business owners and entrepreneurs are like athletes. So think about it. When you're a great athlete, what you do is never the problem. Running the ball, shooting the ball, dribbling it. You're great at that. What always takes them out? Personal life. Personal life. Right? And so when you think about it, the craft that they have, they're superb. But that foundation for the personal life cripples the business. It cripples their their opportunity to excel in what they do in terms of an athlete. And so I, I always thought about that. I was like, man. It's the personal life of a business owner that cripples their business. Yeah. It's yeah. never really the because usually they're typically great at what they do, but if that not having that foundation at home or in their personal life, you only could build that business so high before things start creeping in and you know things from a personal standpoint. So I always think about that from an athlete standpoint. Like, man, they're great. They're great at what they do, but the personal life is what took them out. Yeah, you know, and a lot of it has to stem with, you know, how you were raised as a kid. You know what I'm saying? I grew up in a single parent home. My father was murdered when I was two. And so I didn't see a successful marriage. Uh, but th- thankfully, I was exposed to mentors uh, who, you know, had a successful marriage. Or maybe they overcame a divorce and now they teach me what not to do. You know what I'm saying? They teach me what not to do. So one of the things that I would encourage you as the listener, if you're listening to this and you're, you know, you're looking at building a business and, uh, you know, you know, looking at your relationship is really get that home team straight, you know, finding people that you can bring into your circle that have done what you're striving to do, you know, having those mentors, those coaches, uh, even, even down to investing in a relationship coach, you know, someone who can teach you the things that they've done. Now we, we talked about this too. Like there's a whole lot of folks that's in the coaching space, right? Everybody's got that title coach, uh, but they can't coach their way out of a paper bag, uh, a wet paper bag at that. Uh, but, but you got to make sure people have receipts and, you know, I I mean, shout out to my coach, Glenn P. Brooks Jr. Who, you know, but between him and his wife, they've been married three times. Right. But they're, they've been together married 22 years. So what they're, they're able to teach my wife and me the mistakes that they made because his wife was married twice. He was married once and, you know, and together they've been together 22 years, but they can teach us how to build a successful relationship. And that adds value to us. Right. Yeah. And once we live and, and operate in that in that manner, then we can not only add value to each other, but we can add value to our children. We're both entrepreneurs. My wife is a, is a CPA. She has her own uh, consulting firm where she works with churches. You know, so we, we have to make time for each other, add value to each other so that our family can thrive, so that our business can thrive. But you got you to gotta bring in that reinforcement. You got to bring in some help. Yeah, you know, one thing you said, um, which brought back to my memory, you were talking about the family dynamics mm-hmm. and the structure. Yeah. Um, I actually want to bring this up too real quick before I go there. Anybody that's been in business, well, I think we've all made this mistake, especially if we have a spouse that that's not entrepreneurial. And if you start saying, I got this possible deal. <laughs> and I think we've, and then over time you realize like, I had, you know, let's say you got 10 and you like, all right, I'm probably going to close seven of these, but only two of them closed. Right. And you say like, Oh man, I thought I had a possible 10, 20, 30,000. Yeah. And then your, your spouse is like, all right, well, we got that. We got that possible. And then it don't close. Don't I've seen, not only have I made that mistake, I've seen other people too. Like we just get excited about what's, what's possible. Right. And then the prospect never closes. Right. And then your spouse is like, what's going on? So how do you handle that, man? Like, well, how do you, how do you, how do you overcome for, that? For me over time, I stopped, to, I, I have this saying, until so silver crosses my palm, I say nothing about it. Oh, <laughs> say it again. Say it Until again. silver crosses my palm, I say nothing about it. So I, if I got a potential deal, whatever it is, until that actual silver crosses my palm, I don't yeah. tell, I don't say nothing, nothing about it to about anybody. It. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. like, oh, it's just out there. Uh, and then once it happens, because you've been burned too many times, yeah. and then yeah. I've seen too where spouses get upset. Yeah. They're, they're getting tired of hearing Hey, you're possibly going to be bringing this and bringing that, and they're like, "Hey, I'm not seeing what, what you talked about." Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I think too, I think you talked about it, uh, the family dynamics yeah. with, within that. So, 
I just think that home has to be taken care of. Right, right, right. That foundation allows you to scale not only your business, mm -hmm. but uh, other opportunities because you need the time to think and the, man, the mental capacity to think. Mm -hmm. And I do, I see a lot of times too, what comes into play is continually to date your wife. Yeah. I like like making the time for yourself, even though you're busy. Because like we talked about, your first home is, is really the business. Yeah. And then everything else comes second. So yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. I like that. So what, what would you say are some other strategies? I mean, dating your wife is one thing. Uh, you know, uh, I think having those monthly business meetings, right? Because, you know, obviously if your, your family life is your first business and you need to be, you know, strategic about having those conversations about where we are today, where do we want to be tomorrow and game planning so that you can get there together and not, not separate. Would you agree? Yeah, I think, you know, so just like in business, your greatest resource is your time, mm. money, energy and the last one i always say because of small business owners is attention span okay, okay. and so also compare that to your personal life mm -hmm. where as a family do we need to be investing our time mm -hmm. money energy and attention span mm -hmm. and so you talk about having those, those deliberate business meetings i i look at so me and my wife we meet and we say okay we know we have a daughter so where are we going to be spending some of our time, energy, and money? And so, like, we have her do things like rump and roll because she's so small. So, yeah. they, hey, we got those already on the calendar. She's going to be interacting with other kids, get, get, meet other parents. So we're already talking about, man, it just brings back that saying, a budget is telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. Yeah. Yeah, like what that. we're doing from our family with our energy, time, money, and attention is telling it where to go instead of wondering where it went. Yeah, that's right. I like that. I like that. So that and that, that all goes down to being specific. And so we let off with talking about value. So when we focus on adding value to people, it is about being intentional about the type of conversations we're having, what the type of energy we're putting into those relationships. So today we're focusing on, you know, home team here on ESPN 106.1 FM. So, you know, we want you all to understand as value brokers, if your goal is to be a value broker, you want to make sure that, first of all, you recognize the value that you have on, on the inside. We talked about that last week. But then you want to look at the people that are closest to you and put yourself in a position. So if you are married, now keep in mind, our, our tent is a little different, right? Our tilt is a little different. We're two guys that have been married 10 plus years. So we want to appeal to those of you who, are you know either getting into that space or just getting started now those of you who got a, a few years on us we're going to invite you to send us some some love mail or whatever send us some insights so we can share maybe we have you come on the show to share your perspective now clearly we're not relationship uh uh doctors here right no. i mean i'm not i'm not going to claim to be a relationship guru right no. uh but i will say based on my experience the the importance of that communication and that planning and that projecting uh, because here's the thing, your your relationship shifts from when you were first together. Yeah. Then you had a kid, and then you get multiple kids. Like the dynamics change, man. And but but the principles remain the same. Would you agree? I would agree. Yeah. I we only have one kid right now, so that that changed the dynamic. Of just uh, you know what we do, how we plan things. When you know you start to have that baby now. Baby bag got to come, got to make sure you're prepared for anything that could happen and all that stuff. So it's definitely a shift. And then they said that sometimes when you get the second, it causes a different dynamic. Uh, it's a lot of juggling, bro. My, my <laughs> kids, man, let me tell you something. They are 11 and 13, both girls. So, you know, you got to get your hair done. You got to, you know, all that stuff, man. It's just, it's a whole lot. And so my wife does a whole lot. And, uh, and it's my responsibility to maintain that mental energy in the house, right? So I'm not going to create a whole bunch of drama. I could if I wanted to, yeah. you know what I'm saying? If I didn't like the way certain things were done, but I will I will just say, you know what? I'm going to take one for the home team because I know that she is uh, putting a lot on her plate and that's adding value in a major way. Yeah, that's, I, you know, I think the pandemic helped a lot of people respect what home is so, and, and how much work it takes. Like the other day I was thinking like, you know what, I'm going to give my wife her title of chief life officer like that. just because people don't understand when you got a lot going on like just from my experience with my wife she schedules my doctor my dentist appointments like she runs my calendar 
So that that's chief life officer because yeah. those getting the checkups and all that stuff, making sure. I don't, you know, I think in my life I may have booked one or two travel plans mm-hmm. or flights. Beyond that, my wife does that. She makes sure that I'm staying in a nice hotel, that I'm going to be protected, and I'm not staying somewhere that I could possibly get robbed or harm could come to me. Yeah. So, like, she's seriously the chief life officer over the family and everything and taking care of that. And I know everybody has their different dynamics, but I'm weak there. I just don't schedule. I'm just not good there. So she fills my weak spots, and then I'm able to come in and, and do what I need to do as a leader and a visionary. And, um, yeah, but that chief life officer, I think that's the key to have that. Well, listen, I need to shift gears a little bit, man, because speaking of chief life officer, bro, I almost lost my life this weekend, bro. What? Let me tell you something. So you talk about how your wife planned the trip. My wife planned a trip. We just got back from Charlotte. Uh, we went to this place called the, the U.S. Uh, it was like the Whitewater. Okay. Uh, it's like the Whitewater Center, uh, National Whitewater Center. So they have this man-made white, uh, Whitewater Center. Uh, shout out to the people who are not <laughs> white water rafting in the James River right now because of the anyway stuff that's going on in there. But anyway, we went down there, man, and so you know we get in. They they teach us all. They teach us the ropes. Teach us what we need to do. You know we got our helmet on and our uh, you know swim gear and everything like that. So we go down one path and it's like smooth sailing. They're telling us, you know, this is what to expect. And they say, listen, we're gonna go down this second. This second one is treacherous, right? So we're preparing you in advance because this second this second route is no joke. So we're like, all right, whatever. Why the first the first time we went down, man, had, like almost everybody wiped out. Okay. So I'm in the water. They like swim, swim, swim. The second time, bro, I thought I lost a leg. I was like, <laughs> it's a wrap. And, and what's crazy is I'm in the water. My youngest daughter, she gets flipped out into the water. So she's like, you know, she's flowing. And I, I'm all I could think about was, man, I'm about to hit one of these rocks, man. You know, I'm oh, yeah. my life. And then my leg, I felt my leg dangling. I'm like, <laughs> oh, my leg, I done lost the leg. Lord help, Lord help me. So we get out, we live, obviously we survive. Yeah. We're still alive, right? I'm still alive. I ain't dead. And I'm like, man, somebody probably got a video of this joint on the side, man. And sure enough, we about to go eat. And this lady walks up. She said, I just want to let you know, I got a video for you. Mm. And they show us wiping out. So we ended up, that's a little clip. We got it on Instagram. For those of you who want to catch it, you can catch me at YB the Connector. You see me uh, uh, wipe out. I had a friend of mine hit me up. She was like, yeah, I, I would have fell out if you would have put it to that song. No, no, no. Like, <laughs> you know, oh, no. So anyway, but the point I'm making is, you know, your wife make plans. Just make sure you got an extra life insurance. So if something ever happened, it's a wrap for you. You know, you go to the white water wrap. And then here's what's funny. They make you sign a waiver because they know, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's possible. <laughs> you know what I mean? That head, that cranium hit the rock. It's a wrap for you. So uh, for those of you who understand the, the, the importance of having a powerful relationship, just understand, cherish your significant other. You know what I mean? Because, you know, it, 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 it's tough. It's tough doing life solo, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? It's tough doing life solo. So. ESPN 106.1 Richmond. I'm Patrick McFadden. Peace and blessings. I'm Rob YB Youngblood. Value Brokers. We're going to head to a quick break. All right. Welcome back to the Value Brokers. This is Rob YB Youngblood, Chief Connecting Officer of YB Connects. You can find me on Instagram at the where you can find me, bro? I'm tripping, bro. Like, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. LinkedIn <laughs> is where you can really find me, man. But uh, why be the connector? Hashtag anything. Why be connects? And I'm sitting with my guy, Patrick McFadden. We're here at 106.1 ESPN Richmond. Patrick? Yep. Patrick McFadden here, CEO of Indispensable Marketing. Uh, we increase your visibility and make your phone ring. Um, and you can find me at indispensablemarketing.com or on LinkedIn, Patrick McFadden and uh, Instagram. P McFadden seven. Um, I'm giving out free insights that can make your marketing successful every single day. I love it, man. I love it. So one of the things that we talked about was the the power of relationships, right? We talked about that internal power. Uh, I'm going to tell you about a relationship I just established. Shout out to my guy, Rylan Jones uh, with uh, Lamar Marie's Gourmet Popcorn up in the Short Pump area, man. He just celebrated his fourth birthday. Awesome. And so, you know, I got on my I got on my shirt that you, you, y'all might not be able to see this on the radio, obviously, but it says, peace, love, and popcorn. 
So uh, we 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 showing love to to those of you who love popcorn. Make sure you check us out, LamarMarie.com, and uh, go ahead and order you some popcorn. Now speaking about uh, I guess relationships, relationships in business. Let's talk about how to I guess cultivate a good relationship. Now you're a, you're a relationship expert. Yeah. Um, you know I guess people struggle with they're at a networking event mm -hmm. and they see all these people. Uh, what's like? What's what should they do before maybe they get to the event or while they're at the event that make that can make a difference? Yeah, the first thing is you, you got to know who you are. So you got to know what 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 you bring to the table. So then, and I talked about this last week, but uh, you know we want to continue to reemphasize the fact that there's five very important questions that you have to ask yourself. Right? It's all about being self aware. You know, one of my coaches say that people struggle because of lack of you know self awareness. They just don't they don't have a, 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 a understanding of who they are. So there's five important questions you want to make sure you're asking yourself to prepare for any type of networking event you may go to. The first one is who am I, right? And who am I is totally different than your title. It's funny when you ask somebody, who are you? They'll lead off with, well, I'm the president of X, Y, and Z. And that's not who you are. That's a title that you hold. That's a position you hold. So if somebody say, well, YB, who are you? I say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a native of the Bronx, New York. I grew up in a single parent home. My dad was murdered when I was two. Right? Because that separates me from every other person that might even have the same name, same industry, same title. You know what I'm saying? That who I am, who I am is separates me from everybody else. So it's important to know who you are. The second one is what do you do? Uh, it's important to have a value statement, right? Or elevator pitch. I, I call it the six second elevator pitch, something that I teach my clients. Uh, then why do you do what you do? Now that's a very important question because a lot of folks will do business with you simply because of why you do what you do. Uh, versus what you do. Uh, the next one is who do you serve? And then lastly, what results can people expect to get from you? When you understand that and you then enter into a room, you can now have a high powered conversation where you start with questions. I always, I always encourage people to lead with questions. The worst thing, and I hate when I open up my email, Patrick, and I see a message from somebody and they just start out with I this, I this. I'm like, yeah, I don't care about you. I mean, I care, but I don't. Like, I'm looking at this email. You emailing me, but you talking about yourself. Like, like, are you are you reaching out to me, or are you focusing on? So, I think it's important that we get focused on who we are, so that when we have a conversation with someone and we ask questions, when you ask a question, it's going to prompt somebody to ask a question back, and so that's your opportunity to be able to contribute and share the value that you bring to the marketplace because you are self aware. You know, I think this is a valuable tip that I'm about to offer. Once I change this in my whole company from the way my, even my staff communicates, the, res the response rate to our emails is probably 90%. Come on, I love it. Because we eliminated the word I mm -hmm. and us. And let me explain what I mean. Instead of sending an email to say, hey, Rob, I want to sit down with you and discuss your business. Take out I and say, hey, Rob, want to sit down and discuss your business do you have time to chat just taking out i means that you're giving ownership back to that person that's right and when you do emails i i, I practice this so much mm -hmm. i'm like hey all right hey i want nope take yep, out i it out. let's get together and talk about x mm -hmm. want to da -da -da -da. like i just eliminate i just take it out the first sentence of your emails your response rate will go nuts. But, gonna, yeah, it's also about also about being vulnerable. You set yourself up for a no when you when you lead off and you don't talk about yourself, right? So you're giving somebody the choice. So if I say to you, hey, would you like to go to lunch? They're going to either say yes or no, which is fine. If they say no, that's fine. You know where they stand. But if you say, you know, I want you to come to lunch with me, they be like, okay, so you're not taking to effect that I'm on my, on my summer break. It's all about you. And, you know, so, and I'm going to tell you where I got that from. There's a powerful book I encourage people to pick up. Probably one of the shortest books you'll ever read. Yep. It's called Skill with People mm. by Les Giblin, right? Skill with People by Les Giblin. And it talks about that. Matter of fact, in the very first chapter, it talks about eliminating the, the, the word I, me, my, you know, wow. it's, it, you know, take that out. Because when you when you are approaching someone and you want to add value, the focus should be on them. So you the, the greatest word we can use is you. Right. And so, and I had to learn this from, from a professor. I graduated from Virginia Union and she we, she taught us business communication. You can write out your message, but then when you see the gap, 
go ahead and edit it. Mm. But in real time, we have to be cognizant and, and, and remember who we're talking to. We're talking to another person. The focus should be on them, not on us. You know, it's funny. Where we get information but come to the same conclusion is amazing. So he got that from a book. Mm -hmm. I got that from a blog post by HubSpot talking mm -hmm. about data research on email open, mm -hmm. open rates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's just funny how he got that advice from a book that changed his approach. I got that from reading a blog on the internet. Uh, we're talking about research on open rates from salespeople. But you know, there's nothing new under the sun, Patrick. I mean, even what we're sharing here on this show, it just so happens that, you know, you all are listening to us and we're sharing this insight. It may be new to you, uh, but even if it is, even if it isn't new to you, it may be given to you in a different way, or you may be ready to receive the information now, right? You may have, you know, I hear so many people say, you know, I, I wish they would have taught us this in school. In actuality, they probably did teach it in school, but because you wasn't paying attention, yeah. right? Or because you wasn't ready for the information, you know what I mean? And so there, there, there are some there are some lessons that are not taught. But what we want to do here with the value brokers is we want to bring you information that's going to inspire, empower, and impact you so that you can continue to increase your visibility, credibility, and profitability. So, uh, so Patrick, tell them a little bit more about where they can find you. And, uh, and I got something that we want to uh, wrap up with. Yep, uh, ESPN 106.1 Richmond, Patrick McFadden. You can find me at indispensablemarketing.com, LinkedIn, Patrick McFadden, and on Instagram at pmcfadden7. Yeah, this is Rob YB Youngblood, your number one connector, your LinkedIn locksmith. from the chief connecting officer of YB Connects, LLC. You can find me on LinkedIn, Rob YB Youngblood, on Instagram, YB The Connector. Listen. Uh, we're going to wrap up with a phenomenal video by my coach, my mentor, Dr. Eric Thomas. And it's so important for you to operate in your lane. Do not attempt to be like everyone else. Watch what people do, but do your own thing and make sure that you continue to focus on ways that you can add value to others. And, uh, you know, when you do that, you will find that people will be attracted to you. Your name will be spoken of in rooms that you don't even know is happening because you start and lead with value. And so we definitely look forward to having you. Make sure you're following us uh, and connect with us next week. And uh, we look forward to connecting with you uh, next week as well. If you get rid of your phone, do you understand that you separate yourself from everybody else? Do you understand I'm number one in the world? Not because I'm the best. I'm not the best speaker in the world. I'm not the best. The reason why I'm number one is because I've been getting up at three o'clock in the morning, putting out free videos. All I want y'all to do this year is stop doing what they doing. If you stop doing what they doing, you're gonna be a champion.